welcome. In this video, I'm going to use my own voice for the VO. So pardon me if my pronunciation of certain words are unclear or wrong. Okay, let's begin the tutorial. This is a 3D model of a Japanese classroom which I had made earlier. I will be using this model to demonstrate how I usually set up my render settings. First, go to the render properties and make sure we are using the EV render engine. Then, scroll down to color management, change view transform from filmic to standard. Next, change the viewport shading to rendered for real time preview. First, let's add a sunlight to our scene. Rotate the sunlight so it will cast light through the window. The scene will look more interesting if the sunlight is cast on the wall. Then, go to the light tab and change the color of the sunlight to a warm orange color. And increase the strength so it becomes brighter. Next, we want to add a little bit of color to the shadow. This can be achieved by adding another sunlight. Let's rename this as ambient light. Disable the shadow option since we don't want the second sunlight to cast shadows. Then change the sunlight to a cool bluish color. Next, reposition the second sunlight pointing towards the shadow area. And increase a little bit of strength for the second sunlight as well. The color shadow makes a big difference. But some shadows in the scene still do not have the bluish color that we want. We can fix this by adjusting the world shadow. Open the shadow editor and make sure we are editing in the world shadow. Then change the default gray color in background node to a very dark bluish color. This will add a little bit of blue tint into the darkest value of our render. We are now done with the basic light setup of our scene, but there are still some areas that can be improved on. For example, we can add some additional lights into our scene, which can be used to simulate glow effects that we sometimes see in anime style background art. To achieve this, add a point light. Disable the shadow option for the point light, reduce the value for both volume and specular to zero, and increase the diffuse value. Change the color to a vibrant bluish color. Then, move the point lights to some of the dark areas in the scene. Increasing the radius value will help cover the larger areas. You can see the significant difference this extra point light makes. Let's quickly duplicate the point light by pressing Shift D and reposition them into another area of the scene. Nice, now our scene looks pretty good. But there's one issue that needs our attention. If you look at the shadows, they seem to be pixelated. To fix this, go to the Render Properties tab. Under Shadows, increase the cascaded size Since we are already in the Render Properties tab, let's enable Ambient Occlusion. Ambient Occlusion will darken the intersection and corners of the mesh, which will add more detail to our render. Remember to adjust the distance and factor value as well. Next, we can enable the Bloom option too. Blooms adds the soft glowing look to our render. Adjust the intensity value to control how strong we want the glow to be. The light setup for our scene is now complete. We will proceed to adjust the object's material. For object's materials, I'm only using the basic principle BSDF shader. And change the base color to a suitable color for the material. But there are improvements that we can add to this basic material. 
For example, I can add some details to the notice board and picture frame in the scene. This can be done by using an image texture. So, go to the shader tab and make sure we are editing in the object shader. Then, add an image texture node. Open a suitable texture for the object and connect color output to principal BSDF base color input. Remember, we usually have to UV unwrap the model for this to work correctly. Let's quickly do the same for all the notice boards in the scene as well. Let's work on the floor material next. I want the floor to have a rough reflection of a smooth concrete floor. But before we can use a reflective shadow, we need to enable screen space reflection under the render settings tab. Next, go back to the object shadow tab. Increase metallic value of the floor material and lower down the roughness value. This will give a glossy look to the floor material. Finally, our scene is ready to be rendered for a paint over. Remember to enable the transparent option under film property in the render settings tab so we can save the render as an alpha PNG. The painting process took around 1 hour, so I will only be explaining the important steps in a speed up time lapse format. First, I add a new layer for the sky and fill it with a warm solid color by pressing alternate backspace. A soft edge brush is used to paint the gradient sky. Because I'm painting an evening scene, the upper area of the sky is painted with a darker shade. Next, I added a new layer for the clouds. A custom brush is used to quickly lay out the clouds in the sky. Scale down the brush size to refine the cloud shape. To add more details, smaller cloudlets are painted around the bigger clouds. As you can see here, I'm using the transform tool to quickly adjust the shapes of the clouds. More paintings are done on the clouds. The preserve layer transparency option is turned on, so I can shade the clouds without accidentally painting on the transparent area. I also use the smudge tool to smudge the clouds' edges so they look softer. Next, I paint another layer of clouds in the background to give the artwork more depth. I noticed that the clouds had too much contrast, seeing as they were distant objects in the background. So, I added a new layer and painted some atmospheric effect using a soft edges brush. A screen layer blending mode is used to enhance the glowing effect. After the cloud paintings were done, I start painting over the 3D render. A step that I always take is to paint the beaver line of the objects. Painting bevel lines will help to reduce the sharp 3D look. One nice trick is to use different colors for the bevel line depending on the material color. Holding down the shift key will help us to draw a straight line in Photoshop easily. Next, I start to paint over the shadow edges, using a shade between the shadow color and object color. This will further reduce the sharp 3D look from our render. Another cruel trick 
is to add some glowing beaver lines into the painting. First, add a new layer. Right click the layer and go to the blending option. Enable outer glow and change the color to a warm orange color. Then change the blending mode to screen. Remember to change the layer's blending mode to linear dodge as well. Now, everything we paint in these layers will have the glowing effect. I noticed there were some kind of render artifacts on the wall, so I quickly painted over them. Painting over the reflection to give them a more painterly feel. I feel that the exterior looks a bit empty, so I added a new layer and painted some trees using a custom leaf brush. The point light glow with it in 3D weren't visible enough in our render. So I used a soft edge brush to add more to the scene. One last step, let's add some light rays shining through the window. To do that, I painted random pattern patch around the windows in a new layer. Then, apply motion blur filter to the layer and adjust the angle and distance value. I duplicated the light rays layer and stacked them together to enhance the effect. Nice, now we have completed the artwork.